A very warm welcome back then to the Speed Figures YouTube channel with the latest of our Cheltenham anti-post previews. Uh, just to say that all of the figures on the designated Cheltenham page have been updated with the latest figures uh, and our latest times, so they should be all bang up to date and, and ready there for you to continue your Cheltenham study. Uh, Sam Turner here with you then, along with uh, Andy Holding, of course, resident pundit, Irish guru, etc. And uh, we find you in good form, Andy. Hi, Sam. Yes, um, come out a bit of a dodgy spell in, in January into February, had a bit of a break, and uh, things seem to have uh, taken a little bit of a turn for the better, um, which is good news going into the Cheltenham Festival. Hopefully keep yeah. that form going up. Who knows? Uh, it could easily change again, but um, at least feeling a little bit more confident that the form and the times are beginning to work out again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, plenty of top rated and second top rated winners recently. And, and that little four day sojourn that you had away from racing um, cured the burnout and is an advertisement for all of us to, to get freshened up ahead of the Cheltenham Festival. So all good power to you. Um, right. The race we're going to tackle tonight is the Dawn Run Mayor's Novices Hurdle Grade 2 event. Um, this is on the 18th of March, of course. And it's a race in which they're probably around six or seven to one the field. So it looks a very trappy affair um, when you're sort of spinning your way through it as a, you know, somebody like myself who, who probably wouldn't have as, uh, as, as close an angle on this race as you might have, for instance. Um, but there's a couple of horses that you've been attracted to looking at the anti-post market. Yeah, that's the case, Sam, isn't it, really? When, when you're looking at races say a month in advance you've got to be pretty sure that you're going to beat the market and, and beat it in a, in a way where you feel as though you've got a little bit of a bang for your buck um and perhaps a race where not too many punters are looking at as well i think a lot of the other races you know the particularly the grady races championship races they're very much set in stone and, and the markets are fairly mature i can't see much adjustment but with this one i think the mayor's race is one of the races where a lot of punters stroke bookmakers aren't really uh, paying too much attention to but I'd like to sort of uh, highlight this race with regards mm. um, a, a good time figure for, for our clients in particular. Um, the race is the Solarine and obviously Hurdle Run at Fairy House um, at the time recording 30 odd days ago. And um, Rosie's Hollow was the, was the victor that day. And she won in, in pretty impressive fashion. I must admit, mm. uh, her previous victory, she looked good when she went when she won at Fairy House. But she's taken on Royal Kahala and Galloway's two very high class mares in their own right and um, she beat them fair and square on the day but the time was very good they went a good strong gallop there didn't appear to be any um excuses for the for the second and the third on the day um mm. and given that raw kahala was three for three going into that race and she was a well back five to four favorite i thought the performance of uh, jonathan sweeney's mare was excellent um she went through the race like a good mare and um you know she's put herself in line uh, for, for a tilt at the uh the mayor's race mm -hmm. should connections decide to come over and there's no real reason at this stage to see why they wouldn't no um what can you tell us about jonathan sweeney it's a name that that perhaps many british punters wouldn't be that familiar with very good in the point of point field and and, and um he's very good in bumpers as well mm -hmm. wouldn't be renowned for having too many winners on on a on a big stage if you like but his hunter chasers have always been very good and obviously, JP's got horses with him as well, um, mm. which is obviously a significant sign that he believes in him. Um, yeah. And he's very, he's got a very good mare here. There's no doubt about that. Um, mm. And if you look at the history as well, Sam, of the Solarina hurdle, it's always been a fair guide towards the, the mayor's novice. He's only had five runnings of it uh, since 2016. Uh, Limini won the first one, Let's Dance. Uh, and it's gone. It's gone the way of three out of the five winners have, have come there off the back of a win in the Solarina Hurdle. The only right. two to book the trend were Eglantine de Soy and uh, Concertis in the last two years. It's also significant that Willie Mullins has had five winners of the race mm. and it's five. Uh, it's five um, uh, runnings. So you've certainly got to include uh, Galloway's into into the thought process as well. I was going to say to you, I could just see a little flaw in the plan um, siding with. <laughs> Uh, well, a little flaw in the shape of, of W Mullins. Um, obviously, like a, as you say, he's won all five renewals of this with some real good quality mares. Um, and it looks like Galloway's, who was third in that Solarino, is going to be your chief danger then, perhaps. Yeah, I think it's a it's a wise um, strategy to perhaps back the two against the field at the current odds. You can get 15 to 2 top price uh, at Roses Hollow. I think that will shorten significantly um, closer to the time. And obviously Galloway's as well, top prize nine to one. Actually, I think you get ten to one. Um, I think Carl's Labrooks are ten to one, uh, but generally nine and eight to one about Galloway's, given mm. that that's going to be Willie Mullins's main 
um, representative. He's obviously got Hook up in there, who's full to appreciate it the other day at Leopardstown. But I do think she might struggle to get the trip. I think two mile one on the on the the old course, course will be run on the Thursday on the new course. Sorry, mm. might just find her stamina out. She's looked an absolute out and out two mile as far as I can see. Royal Kahala, because she's such a specialist at uh, Fairy House, going right handed. Whether she can reproduce her top quality form in the Sol Arena hurdle at Cheltenham is obviously out to debate. Mm. I think she might be um, a little bit grand dependent as well. So taking the two out of the Sol Arena hurdle, using the winner as the guide. And the third, obviously, because she represents uh, Willie Mullins. I think if you back those two, as I said, it's 15 to 2, stroke 7 to 1, Rosie's Hollow, and 9, 10 to 1, Galloway. If you back them both each way now, which is the recommendation, I don't think you'd be too far off in the days. You'd be, you'd be disappointed if one of those doesn't give you a massive run for your money come, come uh, March the 18th, as it is. Yeah, yeah. Just to wrap up, then, you've got two quality mares there that are going the right way. Um, good profiles and you know two horses that are responsible for producing one of the best speed figures we've got for sort of mares novices hurdles and both trained by very very capable well, it goes without saying in the Mullins case very capable trainer but Jonathan Sweeney as well even though it's a name that perhaps isn't synonymous with a lot of British punters um, he's a guy that you'd trust to, to deliver a horse on a big day like that. Yeah the Irish look as though they've got the best mares this year as they often have Sam because uh, like I say previous years it's telling you that the Irish are the ones to concentrate on. The best horse that we've got up to now is the Glancing Queen who got beat the other day at Exeter. So she arguably, arguably blotted her copybook a little bit. It's, it's not the kind of race it, to, you'd, at Exeter you expect to throw out the winner of the Mayor's um, Novices Hurdle, a, a genuine grade one. So you've basically got mm. two or three really genuine grade grade one horses, two of which we've chosen, um, carrying the best form line into the, into the, into the big race itself and, and the time figure speaks for itself. So um, like I say, at this stage, it looks a good, solid recommendation, those two. OK, brilliant, Andy. So that's Rosie's Hollow and Galloway's, a split stage play on those two. Best prices you can get, sort of 7, 15 to 2, perhaps 9, 10 to 1 Galloway's as well. Um, superb work, Andy. We'd just like to say, you know, welcome to all the new clients that we've picked up um, in the last week or 10 days, courtesy of the promotion. Great to have you with us. Um, look forward to perhaps going through one or two more of these anti-post races. I know we've got some videos planned, haven't we, leading into Cheltenham to try and whet the appetite. Um, vulnerable favourites being one, perhaps a Cheltenham multiple we might put together. So uh, all sorts of interesting videos, hopefully, uh, that you'll find on, on this uh, YouTube channel in the weeks leading up to Cheltenham, just to keep you satisfied as we build towards the big race, big day and a big meeting. Four weeks, I think, is it? From time of recording to the champion hurdle. It is, uh, Sam, yeah. Come round quickly, as it always does. It does. Starting to warm up as well, Andy, so all good. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, like I said, there'll be loads of uh, content to be put up on the side between now and then. We'll probably cherry-pick another two or three of the main races, but we're also going to have a look at the handicaps as well in due course, so uh, do stay tuned. Great. Thanks very much for joining us. Look forward to speaking to you soon.